and welcome to the pin man today we are going to be looking at not one not two but three fountain pens that is uh this is the monte verde monza almost said mazda monza three fountain pens and oh for the very low price of 28 dollars if you buy today well 28 dollars or thereabouts i really thought that this was a uh, a great idea from monte verde to be able to give uh to produce a pen at a low price point that gives you three options and with the nib sizes you have a medium a fine and you got it a flex nib all in one set the only uh other pen company that i know of that does something similar is the osprey and with osprey pen company with their milano pin and they have what's called a standard nib and i don't know what that means whether it's fine or medium uh, and a flex nib that uh, comes with their pin if you get that option typically as we buy pins we have to choose one nib size now a lot of places you can buy uh, other uh, nib units uh, grip sections and so forth with the that um, would be cheaper than buying a whole new pen if you wanted to do that but um, anyway so I, I thought this was a was a great idea uh, again it gives you uh, some variety in uh, in your pens but uh, so today we're going to be taking a look at this Mo Monteverde Monza 3 set all right and with that We'll see you on the other side. Okie doke, the Monza 3 comes in this nice little package. It has this cardboard sleeve. This slides off. You have your little clip there. Open it up to reveal your three pins. One comes intact uh, then you have your other uh, grip nib and converter uh, for each of the other two uh, right there and then you have a couple of uh, spare ink cartridges there's the packaging so here you have the pen uh, it's a nice sized pen it's it really reminds me of another pen of a Jin Hao uh, pen and I will show that in the uh, size comparisons but um, so I think I think Monteverde uh, you know had somebody else make this pen for them so it's a, it's a decent size pen it's a um, little bit uh, about the same size as a platinum th 3776 so um it's not too bad it's um a little bit on the small size for me but it's it really isn't that bad it's a basic shape here you have um, the uh, you know the barrel you know just comes down it's somewhat i don't know if you call it a cigar shape whatnot torpedo shape whatever you want to call that but anyway you know it's just typical you have some ribs here in the uh, end uh, perhaps for strength uh, maybe to help keep the converter and the uh, if you have an international long uh, this does take uh, standard international cartridges and converters maybe it kind of keeps it from wobbling around in there which I think is a good idea hey, on the finial here you have this one cap that's actually stuck in here and um, it's not all one piece right here 
So there may be an issue with eye drop filling this pin. Uh, there may be a leak leakage issue. I don't know how well these get sealed. Some may be sealed fine, others uh, maybe not. Uh, so you want to you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, pin unscrews here, and then you know it's just a typical threaded there. So it does have a seal. All all the uh, the sections sections have a seal there, so that's good. So that indicates that uh, perhaps eye dropping is uh, intended there. So anyway, just test it out with water. You have a uh, clear grip section here. All of this is clear. That's, you know, I bought just the plain clear one just in case I wanted to use other colors in it. Um, and so it, it just flares out at the end uh, slightly. And then you have the, the nib section there. And on your nib section, there is all it says, you know, it has some uh, typical kind of scrolly work around the edges. And then it's Iridium Point Germany. And this one is a fine, which raises the question for me when it says Iridium Point Germany, uh, that's just talking about the, the tip. The, um, which it, you know, may, may be real iridium point. I don't, I don't know. You never know sometimes, but, uh, which, you know, would be a stronger point. That's all that that's talking about. That doesn't necessarily mean that the pin nib, the whole nib was made in Germany. In fact, when I, uh, those of you who, uh, know Ben and watching my channel for a little while know that I make pins and when I do kit pins they all come standard with an Iridium Point Germany nib and um, I always I always swap those out for a uh, Yo Yovo nib so when I sell them and when I use them I don't just I don't use a regular I don't use the kit pin uh, nibs because I found them to be um, kind of cheap and not very reliable. And then you have the uh, the feed there. The feed is clear, which is kind of cool uh, because it really it matches the the whole pen there. It's clear and it will show the color of the ink that you are using. And right now I have a Diamine Apache Sunset in here. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I kind of like clear nibs, though I wouldn't, I don't have to have them in all my pens, but uh, I like the fact that they will show uh, the color uh, of the ink. I don't know, just kind of give some variety there. Okay, so there's, uh, there's the, there's the pin, and then when you have, then you have the cap. This has, we'll count the turns uh, to get this to open up. So you have one, one and a quarter. So that's good. That's a good uh, selling point for this. On the band, you have Monte Verde USA. And then on the back side, it just says Monza. Okay. You have this uh, slip and seal cap. It's not, it isn't spring loaded, but uh, I did ink this up a while back and I didn't even have it fully uh, inked. It was just some leftover because I've been using it for a while, uh, but it still had some ink flow to it. The clip is a pretty standard clip, nothing fancy about that. Um, let's see. Has some good grip there, not too tight, not too loose. And then the cap finial is just a clear round top. <laughs> okay. So again, nothing, you know, this is, it, it has a nice look to it. I do like the way this pen uh, looks, and especially if you did, if you did, uh, you know, make sure that there's a seal there. But if you did use this for 
uh, eyedropper pin, I think that would look really cool. Not to have this converter or a cartridge in there, but to have uh, ink sloshing around in there, that would look uh, really nice. Okay, so let's move on then. All right, here's some size comparisons. We have the Monza, Monteverdi Monza 3. We have the Pilot Metropolitan and the Twisby Eco. Now I mentioned that the similarities between uh, this Monteverdi Monza 3 with a Jinhao pen. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some pictures up of the Jinhao 992 translucent, and <laughs> you're gonna see that they are almost e exactly alike. So I know Monteverdi outsourced this pen to uh, Jinhao. They they had to have uh, because there's just almost exactly. Not that Jinhao doesn't do copies of other pens. Well, we all know that they do that, but um, in this case, it wouldn't necessarily copy that, I don't think. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's just like the 992, which uh, leads me to the Sailor Compass. It It is very much like the Monza 3 as well as the 992 with some differences in the band uh, or the clip and the center band there but uh, very similar in other areas so i don't know what's going on there but um yeah i, I don't really uh, appreciate that but uh it is it is what it is you know here they are uncapped now i'll I'll note that the sailor is a bit different in the grip section, so I don't think sailor necessarily outsource it to Jinhao. They probably made it themselves. Maybe Jinhao's 992 is to be a copy of the sailor uh, compass. Uh, the feed is clear, but it's a little bit different than the other uh, feeds. The feet on the Monza 3, the nib is a um, little bit different there. So not, not exact, but it's, but it's pretty close. And here they are posted. Alrighty then, we have the Monteverde. Monza 3 and right now I am using a fine nib and it feels like a fine nib. The ink I'm using is Diamine. Autumn Oak. Let's see then. Okay, so wetness. It's a pretty dry nib. Try to squeeze out a little bit more there. Yeah, so it, it feels dry as you're writing too, and that could uh, have a lot to do with the the ink in it as well. well let's see. How about it? Doesn't really keep up very well with uh, faster writing. The feed, in fact, on this particular uh, nib, I may have to do some other work, but getting it, getting it going, uh, even dipping it in the ink and uh, filling it that way. Uh, you know, sometimes when you, use, when you use a cartridge, obviously it takes a little longer to get the ink flowing, but when you fill it from the uh, ink bottle, uh, usually it's it's right away because your uh, feed is saturated at that point. But this one this one kind of had a had a problem there at first. But anyway, got it writing. Let's make sure. Okay, um, it it has it has a good amount of feedback there. 
uh, flex, obviously. I mean, this has a little bit if you. This is not the Ame Flex in there, but you can you can tell if you want to push down. But again, you, you're going to be you're going to be feeling some uh, scratching there. We'll pop in the medium. So this is Monteverde. One's a three medium. And quite frankly, I don't see. There's a little bit, it's a little bit wetter. So there's a little bit more ink flowing from there. Again, it's kind of having some, some trouble keeping up there. Uh, let's see. What about reverse? I didn't do it on the fine, but reverse writing really scratchy. It does do it, but it's yeah. I wouldn't do any reverse writing. Do much reverse writing with this. So there's that. We'll pop in the on my flex. The moment I've been waiting for. Never used a flex nib before, but there it is. The Omni Flex Nib. Okay. So. A lot better ink flow. Makes the autumn oak not look too bad. On my flex. Okay, much wetter. I'm not putting any pressure down there to flex it. Seems to flow good. Again, a lot of lot of feedback, but um, you know it's not too bad. Okay, so let's let's try some reverse writing. Ah. better but anyway okay use it for what a flex is for let's try this out um you know it it just feels like a steel nib that you're putting more pressure to i mean it's obviously a steel nib but um feels like a regular steel nib I should say I I don't know I thought the fine actually did a little more I mean you can you can get a little bit there no railroading so the the feed is is keeping up with it let's see if I try to do it very fast so I don't really see any railroading, so you know, not not too bad there. All right, what do I feel about this set? I'm between a. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and give it a sad face, and the reason why, even though this this flex actually is. Um, Not too bad as far as ink flow. It's better than the other two, but it, it just is disappointing as far as what I was hoping for in a, in a flex nib. The other two, I, I understand, I expect fine nibs to have a little more feedback. Medium nibs, not so much, but you know, I'll, I'll give it that. The Platinum 3776 Gold Nib had, uh, for me, what I would call uncomfortable uh, feedback. But this just did not impress. 
Again, you're talking at a retail of around $28. You know, so the argument can go, well, what do you expect for $28? Well, I, I expect it to perform. I expect the flex nib to act like what, at least what I think a flex nib should be like. And uh, which means that you shouldn't have to put down a lot of pressure just to get a little bit of variation there. I mean, it's like I said, I all, all the steel nibs I have, I do the same stain, uh, the same thing with those. Um, so it just it, it's not performing like I thought a flex nib should perform. I, I think the idea of this pin, I'm going to give this the idea. A happy face because I, I thought Monteverde had a great idea of putting three different pins in each section, having three different sections with three different nibs and their own converters. So you could keep them all filled. You don't have to clean out and fill up, uh, you know, every time you swap like you would the, um, the Osprey pin that I spoke of earlier, but, um, you know, I thought, I thought the idea was great, but the, the nibs are terrible. And that's, I mean, that's what the joy of fountain pens is all about is your, is your nibs. So there you have it. There is the, um, the Monza three, the writing sample there. All right. Again, thanks for tuning in to the pin man as today we looked at the Monte Verde Monza, not one, not two, but Monza three. And uh, I hope this review was helpful uh, for you. It wasn't a very flattering look at this, what I would say would be a potential, a potentially uh, good pin. It, it's definitely a great idea from the Monteverdi Pin Company. Uh, I was just disappointed in the quality, as you see, of, uh, of the writing, and especially the so-called flex nib there. I, I, this is the only flex nib I have, and I was really curious as to what the experience would be like without having to spend a lot of money on a uh, flex nib. I, I know Conklin, I believe, has some options that are uh, not real expensive um, with their OmniFlex and so forth. But uh, anyway, uh, write in your comments below if you happen to have this, help out uh, other listeners that uh, maybe you've had a better experience. Maybe the writing experience I had is kind of along the lines of the way you like your pens to write. You know, we all, uh, that's what's kind of interesting about the fountain pen community is not everybody loves buttery smooth or um, uh, we like different uh, levels of feedback on a, our pens. And so, um, you know, maybe this works for you. If, if so, go ahead and write in your comments below. All right, again, thanks for tuning in and you all have a great day.